what's up guys it's jasmine but my subscribers call me jazz and i'm back i took a unplanned break like i really did not mean to like not post from my last video my the art of letting go video but i had like a week not a week maybe a month left of classes i finished classes on thursday it's wednesday right now so it's been almost a week since i finished classes no today's thursday so it's been exactly a week since i finished my classes so i've just been decompressing i had a lot of final assignments to do um but i have one semester left of my degree so excited um i actually want to get into that <clears throat> i'm gonna get into a few things in this video actually also i'm in my car this is where i like to do my devotionals in the morning so i was just like let me just okay there's a spider but it's outside this time if you're one of my friends that i told this story to you know i recently had a run-in with a spider in a rental car but it was inside I almost died that's my worst fear to be driving on the highway and then there's a spider in the car who man it was nighttime too i was on 6 35 in dallas i don't be out in dallas i had the gps going i'm driving i got a flip-flop in one in one hand my hand on a steering wheel and i'm just looking because I, I saw it on the dashboard and i was so paranoid anyways that's a story for a different day but anyways getting into back to my <laughs> my degree i am almost finished and i feel like the further i got through this degree the more i kind of realized that this degree was not made for people like me um and granted like this is the <sighs> it's not like the signs weren't there but i loved the content of the classes we were taking but i do feel like this degree was geared more toward people who want to be healthcare providers and I don't want to do that I'm doing this degree so that I can teach at a college level because you need at least a master's degree so I found a lot of the classes not even the classes the classes were okay because they have they got the content of the classes was the content of the classes and when it came time for the internship <clears throat> which is that, that I'm doing this summer it was very you have to find like a pretty much like a health care type of space and your most of your hours have to be in patient care or athlete care which is fine but that's not going to help me find a job you know what i mean having 180 hours of working with patients in a clinic i mean it could look good on my resume but <clears throat> i need classroom experience because of course you need experience date experience these days <clears throat> which is frustrating for me like at first as my semester was getting closer to ending i was excited because i was like okay yeah, i'm about to get into my big girl season i'm gonna start looking for a job and i'm looking at job openings and everybody wants prefers experience and the really good ones they want experience which it makes sense you want somebody who's going to be teaching to have like classroom experience but what are we supposed to do when we want when we we want to be a teacher but you won't let me get experience so that i can have the experience you want and who better like as an employer think about this you want somebody who has experience right but why not have somebody who doesn't have experience so you can teach them the way your university, your college operates. So now they're not bringing any of their old habits from their old job. You can train them. They're a completely blank canvas, right? When it comes to administrative stuff, when it comes to teaching, I as long as I know the content I'm teaching, it don't matter how I teach it. I could teach it in a dress, I could teach it in pants. I'm still teaching the same thing, right? So that's one of my frustrations with my degree right now i'm blessed and i'm excited and i'm super happy and i'm grateful that i've made it this far through the grace of god okay because <clears throat> i'm tired but that's what's been on my mind as far as like school and stuff just feel like with this internship class that i'm about i'm about to take in the summer it's not really designed for people like me and so when i start looking for jobs i'm gonna have to really try to like 
I'm, I'm gonna have to sell myself, right? I'm gonna have to sell my lack of experience as beneficial. But speaking of internship, I found a really great place that I'm excited to work at. Um, my supervisors, they also teach at a university. So I'm going, to, if, um, I'm going to be able to like shadow and attend some of their courses and hopefully I can put that on my resume as some sort of classroom experience. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna make it do what it do. <laughs> but yeah, so that was why I was gone primarily because I was doing a lot of work. I was doing a lot of final projects, group assignments. Um, I had one final exam, I had two final presentations and that was just hectic. So I just decided I wasn't gonna be posting, but now that I'm finished, I have, I got back on TikTok. I made a community post about that. So a lot of you guys probably already know, and I've really been enjoying it. I got off of TikTok last year um, because I was, I had an addiction problem. I would scroll all night. I remember one day I spent like seven hours on TikTok. I, I went from my couch to my bedroom and that was all I did. And I was on TikTok the entire time. I was like, this is terrible especially because I was in school, I had stuff that I need to be doing. Um, but now that I'm finished with my classes, my like main classes, I got back on TikTok and I've been enjoying it, especially um, creating videos. <clears throat> and I know TikTok is in the like social media category on the app store, but, or is it? I don't know, I'm gonna check afterward, but I don't consider TikTok social media because it's, <clears throat> it's kind of like YouTube. Um, it's a video platform and I don't consider YouTube social media. Now they are social media adjacent, but they're more so entertainment to me. Um, so that's why I don't have a problem being on TikTok. Uh, I know one person tried to call me out last year <laughs> on my, not even, yeah, it was last year, but I had made the video at the end of 2020 about being tired of social media and some hater, you know, those people who don't have a profile pic and their name isn't their actual government name. They tried to say something about me being on TikTok. And I was like, okay, first of all, you a fan because you know where I'm at. Second of all, why does that make you mad? Like, I, that's something that irritates me when, when your life choices make somebody else mad. And it's like nothing terrible. It's not like I'm out here like selling babies or something. Like I'm living my life and that makes you upset. That's weird. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Um, and I'm not gonna act like I don't care about that stuff because that stuff is like, ew, like get away from me with your negativity. I do care because you're ruining my peace. But anyways, um, I've been on TikTok and I've been really enjoying it. I am trying to see if I can post every day for 30 days, if that's going to get me a lot of results. So I'm on like day maybe 16 or 17 of posting every day I only missed one day so far but I'm trying to see because you know there's all those videos of oh I posted every day on TikTok for 30 days and this is how many followers I got I'm trying to see like okay let's see if somebody who's like a regular schmegular person tries it what happens and right now I have like 14 followers <laughs> I'm not growing like super exponentially but I like that the reward for my hard work is more apparent on TikTok on YouTube, it's harder for me. I barely get a thousand views. Oh, not a thousand. I wish I barely got a thousand views. I barely get a hundred views sometimes. And I say that all the time, but I am so grateful for the people who stay and consistently watch my videos. I love you guys to death. And so I, when, I feel, when I don't post on YouTube, I feel bad because of y'all, the ones who are always like there. Like even if you don't comment on my video, you are the first ones to like my video. You comment sometimes. I really appreciate you guys so much. But, and not but in a bad way, but like I like that on TikTok, I'm getting more than 100 views on my videos. People are seeing, I feel like on YouTube, people are not seeing my videos because they're not searching for my videos. Um, YouTube relies heavily on like search engine optimization whereas TikTok is just like a discovery place <clears throat> and I saw someone put this so perfectly on one of their TikToks they were like when it comes to like growing on platforms TikTok you, you cannot do the same thing you do on TikTok that you would do on Instagram right on Instagram 
or even on YouTube, on Instagram, Instagram is more like the people you already have. Like those are for the people, that's for your community. But places like TikTok, places like YouTube, those are apps or platforms for discovery, right? And I feel like TikTok is more useful for discovery than YouTube is. YouTube, people have to pretty much be searching exactly for your video to find it these days. But TikTok, you are haphazardly scrolling so anybody could just stumble upon your video, right? And that's what I like about it. I like that I could post a video and I know I'm gonna get more, 100, more than 100 people are gonna see it, right? And yeah, so I've been just, I've been taking this pressure off of myself to like be so consistent on YouTube and it'll reward me one day which is true, but like I've been doing that for years. <laughs> and so in order to keep myself from burning out to the point where I quit completely, I have shifted my energy to a place that encourages me to keep going on YouTube, if that makes sense. Because my entire point of being on TikTok is so that I can grow a platform to shift to YouTube. So my plan is not to shift away from YouTube and like only be on TikTok. I'm trying to use other platforms to like push people over here, right? So yeah, but with this whole like content creator journey, I hate the word content creator. I hate the word influencer. I prefer the word content creator over influencer. Um, but I like, I don't know, I, I've started to say digital creator more because I do a lot of different things digitally I like taking pictures, I like making digital illustrations. Um, I mean, technically being an, or, or writing is not necessarily a digital creation, but it's on a, it's on a, an electronic device. Like if I'm typing and if I'm writing a book and it's on my computer, it's technically digital. But anyways, I've been frustrated and I've talked about this before, but feeling like I like, is this what God wants me to do? Because if I've been working this long and I don't have the success that I want yet, am I doing something wrong or am I just not doing what I'm supposed to be doing at all, you know? And I get a, 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 a whenever I talk about this, I get a few different responses. And some of those responses are, well, you know, it's just gotta trust God's timing, which is true. Um, or just, you know, have faith and keep going, which is true. But, like, I got to a point where I was so angry with God. Like, I have a prayer journal. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to just do a little flash because I don't want nobody being nosy. But, like, I will literally pray to God and be like, bro. Not bro, because it's God. But I'll be like, Lord, what am I supposed to be doing? Like, I'll get, like, upset. Like, you see that scribble at the end? Like, I get have real conversations with God. I like to write my prayers. And I was so upset. I was so angry. I was like, God, I've been begging you for you. Yeah, I can go through, like, three notebooks of my journey on YouTube. Like, while I've been on YouTube, while I've been in school, of me praying and, like, crying over and over again to God. Like, asking him, like, are you... Is this something I'm supposed to be doing? Are you gonna bless me the way I've seen other people being blessed? And granted, not every blessing you see is a gift from God because Satan offered gifts too. He offered Jesus the kingdom of the world. Jesus already knew the kingdom was his. So Satan offers gifts too. So don't be, don't think that everything you see that's good that somebody has is always something God ordained for them. Now just a quick side note. But it is discouraging when you see people who aren't Christian or who who claim Christian but don't operate from a, a space of wanting to actually serve Christ. That you know that some people, and this is not, a, I'm not trying to like talk down on other people's levels of faith. Everybody's in a different place in their life. But some people only profess God as like an insurance. <laughs> you know how like I'm covered because I said I like God, but then like, they don't live like God is not in their hearts there's a verse in Jeremiah that I really liked it was talking about how the people have God on their lips but not on their heart there's a lot of people who are like that who are still being blessed abundantly 
and not only does that show the grace of god or the uh the power of satan i don't know which one it is i can't judge that right but it shows the grace of god like if you can bless those people where is my, like what is what what am i doing wrong why why do i not have that what are you doing in my life that i'm not seeing um and am i going in the direction you want me to go right so, so i've voiced my my pain with that before with other people feeling like i don't know what god wants for me and um going back to me writing in my journal and being really angry the next day because i feel like i can't even i feel like i don't even know if i'm hearing you lord like what and <clears throat> right now i'm just reading the bible I'm reading random i'm reading not random books but i'm reading through the bible and the other day i was like i finished the book of daniel and i was like what should i read next oh my gosh guys there's a bluebird and it's like on this post that okay i know that feels like random like very adhd of me but i always feel connected to god when i see bluebirds and redbirds i don't know what it is but i love seeing bluebirds i remember one time another side note i'm gonna promise i'm gonna get back on track <clears throat> sorry my allergies kicking my butt but i remember one time i was asking god to give me confirmation on if i should start my website that i have and i was like god if i see a bluebird two bluebirds that means yes and if i see a red bird that means not yet and if i see a white bird that means no and i saw three different types of birds at three different times <clears throat> it's so funny because i first saw a white bird i was like okay god that means no and then another time i saw a red bird literally I was in my car doing a devotional and as I was walking into my front door, there was a red bird on my roof and it flew right into my path and like flew across and I was like, okay, God, not yet. <laughs> and then like a couple weeks later, I finally saw two bluebirds. Like I was sitting right here in the spot. I was on a call with my therapist because I do phone calls with my therapist ever since COVID hit. And as I was on the phone talking to her about it, two bluebirds just playing around with each other in front of my car. And I was like, wow, I just got the green light from God. So that's what I, that's why I just said, wow, there's a bluebird. Cause I feel connected to God whenever I see bluebirds and redbirds. Cause you see other like regular black brown birds all the time. But when I see a bluebird, I feel like God knows my joy in seeing those. So I don't know, that was just a really special moment for me right now. But anyways, going back to me reading random books, I was reading Daniel, I finished the book of Daniel and I was like, all right, what should I read now, Lord? Cause I feel like I read through all the major prophets already. So what now? And I was like, in my mind, I was like, I should read the book of James and you know how when you're flipping to something in a book and you ask, accidentally flip right to where you want to be i knew i was supposed to be reading james because after i said that i would need to read the book of uh james i like flipped open my book and i landed right on james like the first page of james i was like all right that's confirmation so i marked it and um i hadn't started reading it yet because i just finished reading daniel for the day so the day after i wrote in my journal and i was like really angry and scribbling at the end because i was so sad i was so upset i was crying i was so just distraught feeling like i don't know what god wants for me like what is your promise over my life basically and there's a part in james where because i was like i've been begging you for years god and i don't feel like i have what i've been asking for and I, am i not asking for what you want for me like what is going on and there's a part in james 4 i believe where it says you do not have because you do not ask and even when you do ask you don't have because you are selfishly ambitious and i was like that's for me that's for me because i have got to a point with like all my social media stuff 
that I've become so selfishly ambitious. Like I want nothing more for myself than to be able to live comfortably and not have to worry about my finances. I hate so much the idea of having to do stuff. And I know that might sound, sound like to older generations that sounds unreasonable because they lived through a time where they had to do stuff because that's the way the world turned. Um, especially people of color. I have to go through this job because I need to make money and I don't have the op I don't have the option of, you know what I mean? But we live in a world where like we have the option and there's so many endless opportunities for us to make a living and be happy and you see it all around you all the time and I let what I saw around me get to me so much that I became selfishly ambitious um I don't want to have a job like a regular job and feel like I have to go there I want to have the attitude of I get to go there and I know that that's a mindset but for me the only way that I could feel that way where I don't have to be here, I don't have to be working right now, is if I was in a place financially where I literally did not have to be here. I felt like finances were my way of changing my attitude from I have to be here to I get to be here, I want to be here. You know what I mean? Um, like, that's been my number one concern is finances not want, not wanting to be in a place where I need this to survive like I want to be able to say like yeah I'm doing this because I want to I don't have to worry about money because I have an abundance but that's very I when I read that verse in James I was like yeah that's me like I'm very selfishly ambitious I struggle with jealousy um there's another thing I think it was like selfish selfish ambition and being jealous like I see a bit people how I see what people have around me and I'm like yeah I wish I had that and by the way there's a difference between jealousy and envy a lot of people don't know this because we never like it wasn't really hammered into us in school but jealousy is when you see something someone else has and you want what they have right envy is when you see something that somebody else has had and you want what they have but you don't want them to have it so like if you see if you see Kim Kardashian with Kanye West and you're like I want Kanye West and I don't want Kim Kardashian to have Kanye West or that's envy but if you saw Kim Kardashian with a rapper and you were like dang I wish I was with the rapper too that's jealousy right but anyways I've definitely been dealing with those emotions but I was like how do I not have selfish ambition in this world lord like Like, how do you have ambition and it not be selfish? Because if you have goals for your life, isn't that selfish ambition? How can I have ambition and it not be selfish? And I was kind of marinating on that. I was thinking about it and I was like, thinking about the Bible, because you know, people love to point to the Bible and it's usually unhelpful. And I say that, <laughs> I'll, I'll elaborate that on that in a second. But I was like, Lord, I feel like the only way that I could have ambition and it not be selfish ambition is if I was working towards something that I knew you wanted me to do. Like if I was working, if I had a promise over my life from you that I could put my faith in and operate from, that's when I know. I'm not that's how I would feel like I'm not being selfishly ambitious and that's how I could turn and keep my eyes on what you want from me and how I can seek you and so that's been my frustration is not feeling like I have a, a promise for God a specific promise from God over my life right and I've talked to people about this and they'll be like oh well just remember in the Bible can you think of any stories in the Bible not even can you think of any stories sometimes they'll be like oh look remember like Abraham and Sarah God you know you just have to have faith that God is going to you know take care of things and while that's true sometimes it's very unhelpful because you, it's like you didn't hear me at all um because when you point out Abraham and Sarah you know what they had they had a word from God. They had a promise from God. You are going to bear a child. And Sarah was like, 
my womb got cobwebs, Lord. I ain't having no kids. But he was like, no, you're going to have a kid. And Abraham, you're going to be a father of many nations. And they were looking at God like, okay. But they had a word from God to cling to, right? And I was feeling crazy like, am I, am I... Am I wrong for wanting a specific word of God? Because a lot of people be like, oh, you want a word from God? This is your word from God. And I'm like, everybody in that Bible had a specific word from God. Don't try to play me. Yes, this Bible is great for meditation. It's great for encouraging yourself in Christ. But let's not act like these people didn't have a specific word from God. Let's not act like we have to settle for the Bible. And that's not, that, that sounds bad, but like, what I'm trying to say is stop trying to discourage Christians from only stop trying to discourage Christians from wanting a specific word from God. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, when you want a specific word from God, you you end up seeking God. That is that is more than okay. And yes, we do need our Bible. I'm not I'm not saying we don't need our Bible because there are verses in here that will help you when you don't have your specific word, which I'll get into later but my point in all of like the content creation frustration and feeling like I don't have a word from God is to say that like I kind of realize that when you don't have a specific word from God and you don't know what God's promises for your life it's easy for you to become selfishly ambitious and I kind of had that epiphany yesterday like when you have a word from God that you could put your faith into you instead of having believing in yourself which there's nothing wrong with being believing in yourself but that's selfish ambition right and i believe that god can do it way better than i can right and to my point of like wanting a specific word from god there's romans 10 romans 10 talks about um how faith comes right um and in this passage is talking about salvation basically and like how you need to profess your your love for your faith in christ um for like salvation and how i just saw red bird look at god anyways wow how you need to profess your faith in god for salvation and you have to believe in your heart, profess, and, and profess, right? And it talks about, um, I, I'm going to just read it because it'll, it'll be way more eloquent than I can say it. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe of him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. But not everyone welcomes the good news for Isaiah the prophet said, Lord, who has believed our message? Here's the verse. So faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ, right? And so when I was sitting there and I was frustrated about being selfishly ambitious, I was like, the reason why I feel like I'm selfishly ambitious is because I don't feel like I've heard. There's two red birds. Wow. I don't feel like I've heard my promise from God to cling to. And so... And that's just the point that I say to anyone who tries to tell people to just rely on the Bible. Because Jeremiah 29, 11 is only going to get someone so far until they reach frustration. And I know that is a part of the journey, the long suffering, the patience, waiting patiently for God to give you a word. And I think that's what God is trying to work out is me in me is patience in general. Because he, yeah, he, this is something I he told me like on my birthday is that I needed to work on for this year is patience. So I think my focus right now is wanting that word from God so that I can operate from that rather than seeing what everybody else has and trying to work hard for that. Um, 
And I'm not saying that scriptures aren't helpful because scriptures do help you when you don't have your word from God, your specific word from God. But right now I'm believing for my, and I'm hoping for my specific word that I could put my faith in so that I'm no longer operating from a place of selfish ambition. So that's where I'm at because I do love content creation. And even though I never planned for it to be my main job, I, I've always wanted it to be the door that opens doors, if that makes sense. I am working on something and I'm trying to get it finished. And when I get it finished, I want social media to be the avenue that I am able to push that and grow from this project that I'm working on. So right now I'm just believing for a word from God. I'm trying to operate in places that bring me joy. Right now that joy is TikTok because I feel like I get more of a reward for my creations. But I'm back on YouTube. Like I'm, I say that all the time. I'm on YouTube. I'm not off of YouTube. If I disappear, I'm just going through some stuff. I'm a human. <laughs> but I just wanted to like make this video. I don't know if anybody even made it to the end. But that's a quick little life update where I've been, what I've been up to. You don't have to follow me on TikTok. Because something that frustrates me about social media gurus or people who blew up on social media. Oh, that's another thing I need to talk about real quick before I go. I have noticed that people on TikTok or YouTube or Instagram, whatever platform it is where they get a lot of success, everyone's success story is... I just randomly went viral. When you think about that, right? I randomly went viral. You randomly went viral and that's why you're here where you are today. And yet you're gonna sit in my face and tell me that I need to post this many times a week. I need to put this type of stuff in my title. I need to use these type of hashtag hashtags. I need to do X, Y, Z, this, that, and the third when you blew up off of one video you didn't even have to do all of those steps you're telling me to have the success that you're at today but you you do you see what i mean like all it takes is one all it takes is one video these days and i think that's what's been frustrating me also is because like i've been doing this for so long and i'm like where's my one video lord like where's my one video that's going to change my life that, which is why I was feeling like, is this something you want me to do? Because if I've been doing this for so long and I haven't had that one video go viral and change my life, then maybe I'm not in the I'm not operating in the lane that I want to be in. Um, but I don't think that I'm not operating. I feel like, you know, we get free will for a reason. You know what I mean? Like God doesn't have to give you a specific thing to do. I do want a specific promise on my life, but that doesn't have to be like, Jasmine, you're supposed to go teach in Minnesota. It doesn't have to be something so specific. I just want him to give me a word. Like, this is a word people can't open up scripture and be like, oh yeah, that's my li that's my calling for my life too. Like, no, God told me that. That's my promise that I'm clinging to. Because everybody has Jeremiah 29 11, but I want Jasmine 17 38 worth the Fetty Wap, okay? <laughs> like, I want my word, you know? But anyways, that's something that was frustrating me about going viral is that like all it takes is one to change your life and it happened it hasn't happened to me yet and I just I'm waiting on my moment. So that also played into like the selfish ambition and trying to keep up with the Joneses and but anyways, I'm doing a like 30 day process of posting every day on TikTok and we'll see where that goes. Uh is there anything else I wanted to say before I go? I, I feel it that I need to talk about this one thing real quick because I think it might help someone. So the other day, it was maybe a couple weeks ago, maybe, I was going through something similar where I was like, God, what do you want me to do? So I started fasting. And I was terrible at this fast. I wasn't supposed to watch YouTube or TV or like Netflix in general, like entertainment. I wasn't supposed to watch any of it. And so I... um I wanted to know, God, what am I supposed to be doing? Am I doing what? It's kind of the same thing, right? And I was trying to seek answers, trying to hear from God, like, 
and God can talk to you through many different things. He can talk to you through other people. You might randomly hear something and that's exactly what you needed to hear. You might see something on a billboard. Like and he speaks to you in so many different ways. It doesn't have to be an audible voice. He's going to, he's going to get the message to you by any means. Right. And I say that to say, <clears throat> um, so I was sleeping one night and I usually will put a YouTube video on and, and fall asleep with that video on. And this this particular night, I put a podcast on and it was on Apple Podcasts. And the way that it works is, um, my goodness, the way Apple Podcasts works is it'll keep playing every video. It'll just keep playing all the podcasts until you turn it off. So the whole night podcasts were just playing and i woke up before my alarm this day it was like seven something in the morning and i just so happened to wake up during a specific part of that um doing a specific part of that podcast and do i t do this we're gonna choose a path you know i think a lot of our prayers are like god what do you want me to do you know, like we, we, the future feels so uncertain and so scary and, and we want to do things right. In some ways we want to choose the path of least resistance, or if we're going to choose a path that has a lot of resistance, we want to make sure that it's like resistance with a purpose, I guess. And so when we're trying to make a big decision about, you know, do I, I mean, it starts a long time ago, you know, do I go to this college or this college? Do I t do this major or this major? Do I take this job or that job? Like, do I move to this side of the country or that? Do I marry this guy or do I say no? Am I ready to have a baby? Like, you know, all these huge questions that we're faced with, we want to do like what God wants us to do. What is the process of, of asking those questions look like? And do you feel like he always has a really specific, like a really specific answer in mind? Well, I think that, first of all, you know, Adam and Eve were in the garden. God was their father. And he said, do whatever you want. Don't eat from that tree. Okay. And then even in that, he gave them the choice, even not to choose him. So I want you to understand that God delights in you choosing. And some of the things that we pray about, not that we shouldn't pray about them, but we shouldn't stress out about sometimes just deciding. Like if I go to my closet and there's a red dress and a green dress, I'm like, God, okay, which one should I wear today? You know, I'm standing there waiting for heaven to open and, you know, the angels to come down and a light upon my shoulders to tell me, is it the red dress or the green dress today? I mean, even though that's a silly example, we would all say, just choose. And the principle that God does care about is, is this modest. That's what God said about what I wear. And that it's not distracting or that it doesn't take away from what he wants to do in and through my life or misrepresent him or my walk with him. Apart from that, pick. So some of the things that we stress out about, God is like, pick, because I actually delight in your uh, choice, your choosing. And I created you in my image and a part of you being in my image. I'm a creative God who gets to make decisions. When God said to Adam and Eve, we created him. It says, let them rule. So I just want to empower every person who's listening to know that a part of your God likeness is being able to just make some decisions because it's what you like to do. You know, um, there is wisdom. Um, and the Bible says in James that if any man lacks, lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives freely without reproach. So yes, ask God. But I just want to take this weight off that everything has to be this like answer from heaven, right? But 2 Corinthians one twenty says, for all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. So what does this mean? God is saying yes, unless he's saying no. <laughs> oh so if he didn't say no, because that whatever you want to wear is not modest. If he didn't say no, because this man that you love dearly is not a believer. And he says, don't be equally with unbeliever. If he didn't say no, sex outside of marriage is not right. If he didn't say no, you're supposed to be a good steward of your finances and you're not supposed to be a, a borrower. You're supposed to be the lender, not the borrower, the head, not the tail. If he didn't say no, the answer is yes. 
And then you get to pick and you get to choose. Now there is wisdom. And that's where the Bible also tells us in Proverbs that there is great wisdom of getting counsel from other people. And that's why you want your parents in your life, your mentors in your life, um, pastors in your life, teachers and preachers in your life who are giving you wise counsel. But beyond common wisdom, because there's a wisdom that is common to man, beyond God's yeses and his noes, choose. Like, are you 39 and after four kids, you want another one? Have one. After you've talked to your doctor and talked to some other mothers who are, you know, who've had babies late in life. Okay. How many, you know, am I ready to have kids? Okay. Ask your mom, ask the lady who's older than you in Bible study, because there's common wisdom because Bible, the Bible doesn't say, when is it time to have kids? What the Bible does say is be fruitful and multiply. What he doesn't say is the when, partially because you get to choose. What if he has put into your heart a desire like to build a company? That is a desire. Okay. And if you know, common wisdom, that if I pause right now and have a baby, I'm going to have a baby, but if I pause right now and have a baby, that would compete with the desire that God has given me to build this business. So I'm 23 or I'm 27 and I've got some time. I've got a year, two, three before I have to have a baby, before I start feeling like maybe my biological clock is going to start ticking down on me. Then guess what he's given you the ability to do? Choose. (laughs) Yeah. Now, I would say that if you are single and you're trying to figure out which guy, you know, which is the guy, well, there are some things that God has already put in place. Is he a believer? Does he love Jesus? You know, common knowledge. This is where wisdom comes in. Does he love his mother? <laughs> does he, you know, does he take care of his finances? What does his home look like? You know, what are his friends look like? Because you can tell about a person by who they're around. Proverbs speaks to this, but this is common knowledge. None of these say, is this the guy? However, There are lots of things in the word that will tell you if he's not the guy. And then hopefully you have wisdom around you, which the Bible encourages us to have, which would say, oh yeah, this is a good guy. Mm -hmm. But then your heart has to tell you if this is the guy for me. Yeah. So some of the things, some of the ways God answers our prayers are layered. It's the word, it's wise counsel, but it's also what he's put in us, who he's created us to be. And does this decision stay on the path that God has put me on? But once you look at all of those things, then a lot of these things that we're stressing over, God is like, just pick, (laughs) just pick, just pick and live. Because anything that's going to give me glory, which is what 2 Corinthians 1 says, if I haven't said no, then it's a yes. And you get to choose because that's a part of the creative power that I gave you when I made you in my image. 